Now let's see how we use the mean for group data for the same problem that what we have discussed in the previous session for ungrouped data. So in this session of group data, I attempt to convert the given ungrouped data in the previous problem into the group data. So how do I convert an ungrouped data into a group data is the biggest question out here. And when to use the group data and also when to use the ungrouped data is also the biggest question of the session. So usually group data is used when the data is very large because if I have say 200 students in the class for which I want to calculate the individual marks may not be an easy task for the teacher. Therefore, for 200 students with their individual marks in mathematics, we try to group them as 1 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, etc. till 180 to 200 so that the group reduces the number of marks we're taking for each and every individual student. So grouping the data restricts the whole or the large data. So group data is generally used for larger data. Is very important used for large data. When the data is very large like 1000, 200, 500 in number, then in that case we use grouped data. So for the previous problem, let's try to convert into the group data. So let me form a group of 50. Now forming a group is totally the choice where it is left to the student because the grouping can be done in a group of 20 or a group of 10 or a group of 20. So I try to group them in the most simple form as number of marks in max has obtained through class interval. I denote this as class interval because the class interval is what is denoted for the group. Now let me take 15 in number that is my least marks is 10 and my highest marks is 95 and because the highest marks in mathematics is 100 the paper is for 100 marks therefore I group that using 15 in number. So 10 to 25 is between 10 marks and 25 marks. There are 15 in range. So each of the class interval is ranged in 15. That is 25 to 40, 40 to 55, to 70, 70 to 85, and 85 to 100 is how I get the range of 15 marks in each of the case. Therefore, my class interval, which is number of marks, is ranging between 10 to 25, etc. and etc. Next, let me take the number of students, which is the frequency. Now here, I count in the group data, as in the previous problem, I count all the students who got between 10 and 25. So number of students who got the marks between 10 and 25 are 2 in number is what I count in the group data and then I get 2 as the frequency for the group 10 to 25. Next I count the number of students who got the marks between 25 and 40 and I count them to be 3 students who got the marks ranging from 25 to 40. And also when I see between 40 and 55 I get 7 in number then I get 6 and 6 and 6 in number. Now this is said to be the grouped data where the class interval and the frequency is given out here. So this is how we have number of students and number of marks obtained in groups. So the complete data which had so many huge data out there is restricted to the most simplest data which has only six groups. So for large data the group data helps in calculating the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode. So to start with, let's take xi. Now as we have seen that xi here is the mid value of the class interval. My xi is the mid value of the class interval. Now what is the mid value of the class interval? This, if I just 
come back to this my, my class interval with 10 to 25 this is called the lower limit and this is called the upper limit so 10 is the lower limit of the class interval and 25 is the upper limit of the class interval say for example I take this class interval then I see that in this class interval ranging between 55 to 70 55 is the lower limit and 70 is the upper limit is how we understand so to find the mid value xi we have the formula mid value xi is given to be lower limit plus upper limit by 2 for that particular class interval. So lower limit plus upper limit by 2 in this case being 10 plus 25 by 2 that is 35 by 2 which is 17.5. Therefore the mid value of this class interval is given to be 17.5 is what we get as the mid value for this. Similarly for the class interval ranging between 25 and 40, my lower limit is 25 and my upper limit is 40. Therefore, 25 plus 40, which is 65 by 2, gives me 2 3s, 2 2s, 2 5s, which is 32.5 is what we get. And similarly, when I take 40 to 55, which is 95 by 2, that is 2 4s are 8, 2 7s, 5, which is 47 point five and this being 55 plus 70 is 125 by 2 62 point five is the mid value of the class interval 55 to 70 similarly 70 plus 85 155 by 2 two sevens 14 two sevens 14 point 77 point five and finally 85 plus 100 185 by 2 which is 2 nines 2 twos which is 92.5 is the mid value xi for the class interval 85 to 100. Now I know my fi and I know my xi it is a similar process where I need to find xi into fi and then multiply to get the values. So I multiply 2 times 17.5 and then I get this to be 35 because 2 times of 17.5 is 35. Similarly, this into this gives me the next xi fi for the class interval 25 to 40. So 3 times of this being 97.5. Similarly, 7 times this is 332.5 and then 375, 465 and 555 is what I get when I just multiply this with this for the respective rows. So now once I obtained my xi and my xi fi, I'm almost done with my mean because from this table I get I get the total of this to be sigma xi fi when I add each of these values, I get this to be 1860 when I add up each one of them. Similarly, when I add each of sigma fi, the frequency, I get this to be 30, which is already obtained in the previous example session. So once I know these two values, I clearly know that for the grouped or ungrouped data, my mean is given by sigma xi fi by sigma fi which on substitution gives me 1860 divided by 30 which is 62 therefore mean is 62 for the given example problem is how we understand mean of group data when the data is very large my mean equal to 66 implies is equal to 62 implies that on average the whole average of the class is approximately 62 marks